Okay, good morning, everyone, to those in the room and those on the live stream. We're going to start our first session of the day. Um, this short session, hot off the press, is a bit of an institution in the uh, uh, annual meeting for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action. Each year we hear from a selection of our working group task force and initiative leads to see what they are bringing us. They've been working hard, not in the literal press room like this image from the past, but in our digital at home <laughs> version that we have nowadays. Um, and they've brought, they, they've been doing this in a real hurry. Usually every year ahead of the annual meeting, we're in a real hurry to get something published and ready. So yeah, these four ladies have been actively working to get their things ready and share with you today. Um, in a typical year, we share around 50 different technical products as the Alliance, whether training, guidance notes, reports, briefs, videos, webinars. So we're pretty productive. Um, and our current major focus is ensuring that these are accessible, relevant, and reach those who need them most. So please don't be shy to tell us if there's something missing that you need in your work, or if a resource that's available in English would be great to have in French, Spanish, or Arabic. Please let us know. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand to our first Working Group Task Force Initiative lead, Joy, and she will introduce herself. Over to you, Joy. Thank you. Thank you, Camila. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Joy. I'm the lead of the Community Level Child Protection Task Force. I think I met most of you at the marketplace yesterday. Uh, I work for World Vision International. So I, I want to introduce you to our new tools that we developed as the uh, CCP Task Force. The Task Force has recently worked on a theory of change for our CCP programming. The reason for developing this theory of change is that we would like to define a commonly understood long-term goal in relation to our community child protection work. So you will find the, sorry, I need to move this slide. You will find the definition of a theory of change on the slides that give you an idea of the purpose of developing a theory of change. And um, the term CCP, which stands for Community Level Child Protection, it's somehow very broad. Sometimes uh, people also ask me, what is the definition of uh, Community Level Child Protection? And I find it quite hard to explain to the different audience. So we're developing this um, theory of change, hoping that uh, as a task force, we know what are the good practices we wanted to promote what changes we would like to see in our CCP programming, and what does a good CCP program would look like. So that uh, we can, there are some clear shared definition being shared among practitioners, stakeholders, and even donors in defining a good CCP programming. We hope that this theory of change will enable us to measure the expected quality and outcome of our child protection work at community level. So on the next slides, you will be able to see some of the common terminologies that we use um, in our CCP programming. When reviewing our common approaches used at the community level, such as setting up child protection committees, which I believe many of you have experience in supporting to create child protection committee uh, with community members. We also do a lot of training of tra uh, community members on child rights, child protections, or we are doing a lot of awareness raising uh, events within the community. When we are uh, studying those initiatives by child protection humanitarian agencies, we often find that those community-based activities are quite top-down and not very sustainable without uh, continued external support. So we, when we're referring to the terms community-based, which you can see on the first circle um, on the slide, which is on the uh, right-hand side, uh, these terms actually are often refer to the fact that the program is being physically implemented within a context of a community. But it doesn't necessarily mean that there is active participation or 
uh, ownership of the community. So we're doing activities within the community, but there might be very little um, uh, consideration about how we can promote higher ownership, how we can promote active participation. But at the same time, we also recognize that there are limitations and challenges in applying community-led approach, which you can see it, it is on the, uh, the left-hand side of the slides that's uh, towards the end of the, our long-term goal of doing community-level work. Uh, this approach, approach has been promoted by our development actors, but we realize that it might not be always possible to do community-led approach in humanitarian contexts. So as the task force, we're trying to find a, a balanced approach. By developing this theory of change, we hope that this will support agencies to move away from purely community-based, top-down approach towards to promoting higher level of community ownership, which you can see is in the middle of the circle. So that's the kind of the um, balance that we're trying to make as the task force, considering the special conditions and, um, and challenges uh, in operating in humanitarian contexts. So uh, this theory of change that uh, we hope that uh, each program can define what higher level means to them. So they can move maybe from purely top down to slightly increasing the level of community ownership or community participation. If they already have very high level uh, of community ownership, then they can even aim higher. Uh, moving towards closer to community-led approach. So it really depends on what is feasible and relevant in that particular context. So lastly, I'm uh, showing you the screenshots of a uh, theory of change. I'm sure that you cannot read it. <laughs> I can't even read it clearly from here, but uh, you will be able to find an online version on the Alliance website. And there is also a guiding documents that explain the purposes, the definitions, and the different levels uh, we use in this theory of change. And we have defined that there are three levels, uh, including the local CP system, the community level, and the agencies level uh, in this theory of change. And they are all very critical in achieving higher level of community ownership. I try to repeat this term as many times as possible so that, that it gets stuck in your mind. <laughs> I'm promoting this idea now. Um, yeah, so you can use this theory of change in um, designing proposal or putting together the log frame and indicators, and even using it maybe to advocate with donors, uh, uh, management or stakeholders in achieving uh, or in shifting the way we have been working with community. So uh, I hope that you will find this uh, document useful and uh, there's not enough time to go into detail of this theory of change, but we are planning to do a global webinar so that it allows a more in-depth discussion and interactive dialogue. But thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm handing it over to Elena to talk about the next tools. Thank you. Thank you Joy. Oh, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, buenos dias a todos. My name is Elena Giannini, and I co-lead the Learning and Development Working Group. I feel like I need a drum roll because uh, we finally have the CPHS. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, we finally have the CPHS, CPMS, so the Child Protection in Humanitarian Action and Child Protection Minimum Standard um, Learning Package available. Uh, ready to rock in Arabic, uh, English, Turkish, and thanks to our wonderful colleagues in the region in Spanish as well. So if you are planning to roll it out or if you're interested in rolling it out, please let us know and we will be able to support you. Uh, if you want to be part of the magic, we're really keen to get it also going in French, so I'm looking at our French-speaking colleagues here. <laughs> so if you're interested in supporting like French translation, let us know. Yeah, and uh, next I wanted to talk quickly about like our revamped child protection competency framework, which has a set of really easy and user-friendly tools to go with it. So if you're scared by the CPHA competency framework and you know you don't know what to do with it, well, 
there are tools like to use it uh, for uh, job descriptions development. There are tools for uh, creating competency-based interviews. Not only we have it equipped with uh, uh, performance evaluation tools that can also be used for your own self-evaluation or for the self-evaluation of your teams and colleagues and partners. This is complemented by the competency development guide, which is a roadmap of available learning pathways, of available learning tools, so that like, you can truly help uh, colleagues, practitioners, and unlock their full potential like with uh, these, these possibilities in terms of learning. That's all from my side. Like, if you wanna get in touch, like with the Dell and D working group, like you know where to find me here in Panama. But um, you can always write to us at this email address, and it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. And I'm leaving the floor to Suzanne. Everyone. So I'm Susanna Davis. I'm a co-lead of the Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group on behalf of Save the Children. And I'm going to take you through, let's see how well I go, um, three new sets of resources. We've been quite busy um, in the last year on different resources around working across sectors. Um, and I think really important to point out for each of the sets of resources that I'll be presenting to you, these were very much uh, co-developed together with sectoral colleagues from the camp management sector, from the food security sector, from the health sector, from the education sector. I think this is a really positive development in general that as a way of working, we are co-developing things with our colleagues, global technical networks, country level cluster leads, from these sectors on an ongoing basis. So when this comes out, it's not just our tool, we're also working with them to launch it. Um, so we're really pleased with the progress we've been able to make on that. So really briefly, our first set of tools, so building from Elena was telling you about our CPHA competency framework, we now have three complementary competency frameworks that are focusing on the camp management, food security and health sectors. And these are really focused on for colleagues in those sectors, what are the expectations? What are the behaviors, knowledge and skills that they need to have to be able to deliver on their responsibilities around accountability to children, safe programming, access, et cetera. They were, as I said, developed collaboratively with these, uh, with these sectors. And we really hope that they can be tools that are used for writing those job descriptions, for recruiting, um, and we know that they are actually already being used for the development of training packages in each of these sectors, thanks to the collaboration we had with the World Food Program, with uh, the International Organization for Migration, and with the World Health Organization. So really super positive step for us. For colleagues in the region, these are available in English, French, and Spanish. So very accessible for you to use through um, your own agencies as well. Let's see if I, oh, sorry, I've gone the wrong way. Oh, and now I've turned it off. I have more power than I really should with this, I think. The green. Do we know, how do you make it go forward? The green one. The green, sorry. Technology, apologies. Okay, the second one is we've got a new indicator package to measure cross-sectoral contributions to child protection and well-being. So again, another resource that's available in English, French, and Spanish, so ready to pick up, ready for you to use, includes accompanying tools, and this is really focused, again, on operationalizing child protection mainstreaming. It's not indicators for us, as child protection actors to include in our programming, but rather indicators for us to use and advocate with other humanitarian sectors to be including in their programming so that they can effectively measure the extent to which their programming is meeting children's safety, accountability and access needs. And again, it's a co-developed project. We had um, input from many sectors, um, and we really hope that this is something that we can see used in resource mobilization, in interagency response plans, and certainly in individual agencies programming as well. 
And last but not least, so some of you might have been familiar from last year's um, annual meeting that we developed this Working Across Sectors Starter Kit. This one is for us. This is for everybody in the room. And it's really for anyone who is starting to initiate these collaborations and partnerships with other technical sectors in a humanitarian response. Um, whether you're a program manager or you've got frontline staff who are trying to do this and you're not quite sure where to start. Maybe you don't know too much about the sector you're trying to engage. You don't know their language, values, or priorities. Maybe you're not quite sure the steps available, the tools, etc. This is your starting point. It's now, the reason we're presenting it again is because before we only had it in English, now we also have it in French, Spanish, and Portuguese. So ready for all of you to pick up and share with your colleagues. Um, and please do feel free to be in touch with the CPMS working group if you have any questions on any of these products. Um, if you'd like to learn more, we're always happy to be in touch. And I'm gonna hand over to Sylvia. Gracias, Susana. Thank you, Suzanne. If you allow me, I will talk to in Spanish to honor my mother tongue, but also to appreciate the fact that in a global meeting, we finally can be celebrated in this region. I wanted to uh, make you ref uh, reflect. I don't know if you all are awake, if some of you went jogging this morning. I wanted to ask you a question for you to reflect upon. Do you believe that you or and or your teams know or have the tools, the resources to prevent the risk of, of uh, protection in food security and nutrition programs? I want you to start thinking about, uh, we have the resources, do you have the knowledge? What do you believe? That's why I would like for you to reflect if your teams uh, for food security and nutrition in the areas where they're operating or in their organizations know how to identify girl, uh, vulnerable girls and boys and assign them over to the protection, uh, child protection stakeholders. If any of you have thought or that the answer is no for this question, I have very good news for all of you because this will be of interest to all of you. We recently launched four different virtual modules for learning. Uh, they are open for everyone. Uh, it's free, uh, free access through the virtual learning platform Kaya. You can sell, uh, take your uh, mobile phones, your cell phones. I apologize. You can take your mobile phones and scan the QR code, it will take you to the platform, and here you will find four virtual modules in which the content, the first one gives you an introduction to the mainstreaming of child protection and food security and nutrition programming. The second one is the child protection risk assessment and the actions undertaken for mitigating these. The third one talks about the referrals between child protection actors and food security and nutrition actors. And finally, the fourth one focuses on child participation in food security and nutrition programming that many times it would appear that they would not be closely linked or related to the stakeholders of food security and nutrition. All of this, you can find them in the Kaya uh, website or pro, uh, platform. Sh I encourage you to sh use it to share it with your teams and with your coordinating teams. And uh, one of the successes here of this is that it's also going to be available in the internal pro uh, platform for the WFP. So if any of you have a, a learning platform and you would like these resources to be directly linked to, into them, Get in contact with me. It's available in English, French. And in the next two weeks, thanks to the uh, support of uh, for Arabic and Spanish as well. I ask for your support to disseminate, transmit, and raise awareness on these platforms as well. Without further ado, I will hand over the mic now to Camilla. Wonderful. 
so many resources. I also can't work the clicker, it seems. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Anyway, maybe the tech guys can help us. Um, because the last slide had some ways that you can access these resources. Before we get to that though, I just wanted to share my three key takeaways from what our wonderful presenters have shared. Let's achieve higher levels of community ownership. Let's work to develop competent workforce, including ourselves. Before I traveled here, before all the busyness of the annual meeting, I printed the competency framework and thought, hey, let's see what I can develop in myself. I haven't yet looked at it, but that's one of my plans for the calmer months that follow. And then working cross sectors, really, how can we leverage our colleagues to do more for child protection? We are a relatively small, relatively under-resourced sector. So let's leverage the you know, huge workforce of other sectors to protect children. So we now have the slides up, which is great. So you can sign up to our resources in about five different ways via the newsletter, which you can subscribe to on the website. Obviously, the website's also packed with resources presented in lots of different great ways. Sylvia mentioned Kaya. Kaya Share is our very new, I think it was launched this time last year, um, learning hub where you can access all of our learning resources in one place. And then you can follow us on social media and all of the handles are there. So why not do it now?